Hello everyone, it's your girl Claire and I remain your girl Claire and today um, I am here again to um, share one or two things with us from the word of God, from the scriptures to encourage someone and to inspire someone and um, I just quickly want to say a big thank you to everyone um, who is a part of what God is doing here on this channel and to say, um, I hope you're doing good. I hope you are staying strong and keeping faith. And I hope, um, you are not allowing the circumstances of life to define you and to determine the direction in which your life goes and to say to you to stay strong and keep going that, um, it is well with your soul. Amen. <laughs> so, um, and also I want to give God all the glory. I just want to thank God for his grace, for his mercy. His grace is sufficient. And I am so grateful to God for how far he has brought us all. And the fact that, um, because of God, you know, we can face tomorrow because we have our lives, you know, in him, we can face tomorrow and we can, um, live above the circumstances of life. So I give him all the glory. So today I want to um, share a word from the scriptures and my message is taken from the book of Luke chapter 23 verse 32 down. And my message is understanding the mystery of God's mercy. Amen. Understanding the mystery of God's mercy. Um, because um we live in a world today where a lot of people don't understand um, the mystery of God's grace, the mystery of God's mercy, the mystery of God's love, his compassionate um, nature. I am not saying that, uh, you know, because God is compassionate, you should go ahead and, you know, live in sin. No, that is not what I'm trying to say, but I'm trying to make you understand that if you understand the mystery of God's mercy, you know, you will have um, a, a, a beautiful relationship with the lord in other words if you are able to understand the mystery of god's mercy you know you will be um able to live a successful life here on earth and you won't have to be you know burdened by by the guilt of um thinking you know that your sins are unpardonable that's actually what i'm trying to say in other words irrespective of what you've done god if you ask god if you genuinely ask god for forgiveness if you um embrace you know um the love of god and if you um embrace the the, the um grace of god then you will be able to live you know um a good life here on earth because that will help you to understand God more. If you understand, you know, this compassionate and merciful nature of God, you know, so, um, or this quality of God, you know, that is, you know, merciful. So, um, I want to use an example from the scriptures and, um, it's all about two men who were hung alongside with Jesus on the cross on Calvary. While one was um, unrepentant and um, impertinent, not showing any sign of remorse for his crime, the other robber became what convicted in his spirit and reached out for God's saving grace just when the chapter of his life was about to close. At that point, he knew he needed to make peace with God, to repent and to identify with God in order to be wherever Jesus Christ would be. His salvation became a surety the moment he acknowledged the sovereignty of God and his kingdom. Amen. The moment Jesus prayed um, to God to forgive those who were involved in his crucifixion, this repentant robber realized that eternal forgiveness and salvation is in God alone. So I am talking to someone today i don't know what you've done and i don't care who has judged you wrongly and i don't care who has condemned you i want you to know that if you turn to god if you realize that your eternal forgiveness and salvation is in god alone then everything will be fine amen 
So he was convinced beyond every reasonable doubt that Jesus wasn't guilty of any offense he was being accused of. So he didn't hesitate to reach out for God's immeasurable mercy. Amen. If you read verse 43 of the book of Luke chapter 23, we see the forgiving nature of God being what displayed and how the repentant robber went from being condemned to being forgiven just within a second of time from being doomed to being saved from, you know, uh, to being saved by the power of God. Amen. He went from being a notorious criminal to being a child of God, which shows us the attribute, that attribute of God, you know, of being merciful. Amen. So I want us to quickly read from the scriptures. It says, if you read from verse 32, it says, two men or two other, okay, it says two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. Sorry about the noise, my neighbors. I don't know what they are doing there, but it's a little bit loud right now. He says, two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. And when they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right and the other one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. So you can see how remarkable it is for Jesus to pray for the same people who crucified him, the same people who are making jest of him, the same people who nailed him to the cross. He says, the people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others, let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. He says, the soldiers also came up and mocked him. In other words, they ridiculed Jesus. And they offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And there was a written notice above him which says or which read, this is the king of the Jews. In other words, they put that there, ridiculing Jesus, you know, saying um, he is the king of the Jews. So they were mocking him. They were making jest of him. He says, and one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults on at him. In other words, he threw insults, you know, at Jesus and said to him, Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. He says in verse 40, But the other criminal rebuked him and said, Don't you fear God? He said, Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. In other words, we deserve this punishment. But this man has done nothing wrong to be in the same position or the same situation with us. In other words, Jesus didn't deserve to be, you know, there or to go through what he was going through with them because he was convinced, this, this repentant robber was convinced in his spirit that Jesus didn't do any wrong. Amen. It happens in our world today. If you look at the other um, criminal he joined the people to make jest of god we, we still have such people today in our world who mock jesus who don't believe that god is real who don't believe in the salvation of their souls who don't even believe that um, heaven is real and hell is real a whole lot of people out there who when you talk about jesus they, they see it as you are absurd or they think um you are not normal because they don't believe so this man didn't believe so he joined the rest of the world you know he wanted to be like them so we have such folks in our world today he wanted to be like the other people and joined in the mockery but this particular robber realized immediately that he needed you know um to embrace god's forgiveness amen to, to to in other words he realized at that point 
of his life that um, he needed to be saved and that the only person who could save him was Jesus Christ. So he did what? He reached out to Jesus. And then he said in verse um, 42, he says, then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This man humbled himself. He realized that he needed to be saved and said to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him saying, truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Like I said before, we just see the forgiving nature of God being displayed. Just within a second, this man was pardoned by Jesus. This man was forgiven by Jesus. Just within a second, we see God show this man mercy. Amen. So this shows us that no matter the gravity of your sin, if you repent genuinely and ask God to forgive you, he sure will. Amen. Through the death of Christ, we see how remarkable it is that the robber adhered to the call of repentance and acceptance of the forgiveness God was just about to provide through the death and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Though this man was in agony and it was an excruciating moment for him, yet he did what he chose to hear the Spirit's cry to embrace the mercy of God in order to escape eternal destruction. While the unrepentant robber joined the torturers of Jesus to insult him, to mock him, and to ridicule him because of what pride, he lost the salvation of his soul forever. When he had all the opportunity as a man who was next to the Savior, heard him pray, witnessed the salvation of the other thief. But rather, he chose to be like the others. He chose to be like the world. He chose to be hard-hearted and cruel towards God. So it's a matter of choice. He rejected God in order to impress men. We still have such folks today. Just because they want to impress their friends, they want to impress people, they reject the call to salvation. They reject the call to repentance. But the repentant robber, on the other hand, was convinced that he was a sinner and that he needed a savior. What did he do? He humbled himself before the Lord. He understood that no matter how minor or how extreme his sins were, that it was not too late to experience God's saving grace and mercy if one repents. This shows us all how important it is to respond by faith to the message of salvation, and to embrace God's loving kindness. Amen. He was condemned to death um, by hanging on the cross by men because of a crime he committed that seemed what unpardonable to man. But Jesus granted him forgiveness and much more assured him of a peaceful life with him in eternity. What a merciful God he is. He is truly the God of his second chance. So I am letting you know today that irrespective of, you, you know, you, your, your sin or the gravity of your sin or the weight of your sin, if you will humble yourself today and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior and confess your sin to him and Turn away from your evil ways. God will give you a second chance. He will forgive you. He will save you. He will deliver you. Amen. Just like he did with a man on the cross too. So maybe you think your sins are beyond pardon. If only you understand the saving grace of God today. And understand that no matter the weight or gravity of your sin, God can forgive you. And though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they will be like wool. If only you humble yourself and turn to Jesus and ask him to help you. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to deliver you, to save you. This is what the word of God tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. King David understood the mystery of God's mercy. 
no wonder in the book of psalm chapter uh, 51 verse 1 if you read it he prayed to the lord saying have mercy upon me o lord according to thy loving kindness he understood the mystery of god's mercy he said according to thy loving kindness and according unto the multitude in other words unto the abundance of thy tender mercies not because he was a perfect being no but because he knew the way to god's heart humbling yourself to god in the secret place acknowledging that you need his mercies to pull through each day david understood the compassionate and forgiving nature of god amen if you understand the mystery of god's mercy you won't live your life with a sense of guiltiness that your sins are unpardonable by God. Should we continue in sin, that grace may abound? Nay, God forbid. But if you ever find yourself in that place, go to God in prayers. Tell Him to forgive you. Ask Him for forgiveness. Embrace His saving grace. Embrace His love. Embrace His tender mercies and he will surely reach out to you. God bless you, and I love you, and see you in my next video. God bless you, and may the Lord open the eyes of your spirit to understand the mystery of God's saving grace and mercy. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.